welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 37th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. In today's episode, we're going to talk about that truism that we always hear, the quote, it was meant to be, whatever it is, whether it's relationship, friendship, a life path, a journey that we're on, the people we meet, whatever it is, we often hear people coin that phrase, it was meant to be. But today, what I'd like to do is break that down. Today, I'm going to share with you seven truths to what it really means with regards to things happening the way they are supposed to, or karma, or fate, whatever, destiny, whatever it is that you call it. There are some tried and true things that you need to do, I need to do, to make our dreams come true. We have to play a role too. It is a dance. It is a partnership of sorts. Not of sorts, it is a partnership and both parties must be involved. So we'll get to that in just a second, but to let you know what today's petite pleasure is going to be, it is a book that I am so excited to share with you that I think will help inspire you to even greater success. It's a simple read, one I devoured in about a couple days on my recent trip to New Orleans, and I look forward to sharing with you at the end of the podcast, so do stay tuned. All right, let's get into today's episode, The Truth Behind It Was Meant to Be. As we all know, a lot of things are out of our control in life. A lot of things, things that if we try to control, we actually will reduce the quality of our life. Now we can fight what we can't control, or we can just let it go. The key is to master what we do have control of. Now, granted, when it comes to things being meant to be, that inevitably means that there are other factors, other people, other variables that will come into play to make something happen. We are not the only ingredient, but this is the thing. We are an ingredient. We are a very important (laughs) ingredient in how things are meant to be. Timing does play a role as well. But as we go through today's seven lists of truths, I think what you'll find is that your destiny, your fate, your it's meant to be is more in your hands than you realize. And I want you to find that courage today to find that gumption. I love that word gumption to not give up so readily because I think you'll be surprised what could happen if you keep striving forward. So the first truth behind it is meant to be is one of my favorites. It's that you must put yourself in the arena. And I am using that term arena as inspired by Teddy Roosevelt's speech at the Sorbonne titled Citizenship in a Republic that he gave in 1910, shortly after he left office. Now, this was a worthwhile speech in its own right, but the part that has jumped out at many people, that has been used by a handful of politicians from the past to inspire their own people in their own venues, is a passage that is now called The Man in the Arena. And I'm going to read that to you very quickly. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds? who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeats. My first introduction to this quote was Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly, and I have ever since devoured it, reread it, reread it again, and use it in a variety of contexts in my life for inspiration. And a reminder, most importantly, that if we are going to be able to achieve anything, accomplish anything, grow, 
build strong relationships, acquire success in our professional field. We have to actually be there. We have to be present. As Woody Allen says, 90% of success is showing up. And there's some truth to this. You can wish and hope and say, oh, but it has to be this way. And I hope it is. But if you actually don't put yourself there, it can't even have the hope of happening. I think that's huge. And the other part of this that I love is that by putting yourself out there, trying something, even if you fail and fail again and again, and I'll talk to you about my experience with that in a second, at least people know what you desire. At least people know what you're willing to risk, what you're passionate about. And then, and then when you show your sincerity, that's when people may just start to help you. They will reach out to you. They will try to assist you, to guide you, to mentor you. But if you don't let people know what you want, what you think you can do, what you know you can do maybe, how can anyone be there to help you? So number one, you must put yourself in the arena in order to have that destiny, that fate that you so, so want to happen in your life. Okay. Number two, you must come equipped. Now you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be top of the game for compared to everyone who's ever done it. You don't have to be the perfect person for a perfect relationship. Everyone's imperfect. There is no such thing as perfect. We all know this. I'm being repetitive. I realize that. But my point is do everything in your power to come prepared to be your best self. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. Now, I, to speak to what I mentioned in the first point, I recently announced in the blog this last week that I am thrilled to have the opportunity to be moving. I am taking on a job as a teacher in Bend, Oregon. So I'll be moving this summer and beginning, beginning to live and work in the Bend area, which I have been wanting to do for years, for years. And I will tell you right now, I tried to get a job last year. Didn't happen. Did not happen. Had an interview, didn't work out. And of course, I was discouraged. It was something I genuinely wanted. So I was disappointed. I was disappointed. So I kind of put that dream on the shelf for a few months. And I didn't really think about it for a while. And then as the season came for a new shifting of jobs with regards to school seasons and whatnot, I started to think about it again. I started to think about it again. And I said, wait a second. I really do want this. What can I do to improve my chances? How can I become a better candidate? And so for the past nine months, I have been trying to hone what I could, develop what I could to give myself the best chance. Now, did I give the best interview this spring? I know as I walked away from that interview that actually gave me the job that I, I, I'm i so self-critical. I was able to you know go through every little thing and say, oh, plus, negative, plus, you did great. You did. But I do know that I did better. I did better. It wasn't perfect, but I did better. And that's the thing that we can control. We can control how prepared we are. I often say, and I think I've shared this on the blog many times, there is no such thing as actual luck. It doesn't just randomly happen. Luck is opportunity meeting preparedness. And we have that preparedness in our control. We don't have the opportunity necessarily in our control, but we do have coming prepared, being our best self. And that's number two. You must come equipped and to be your best self. Number three, accept the unknown. If you are going to achieve great heights, cultivate strong relationships, there's going to be things out of our control. And that means investing in other people, investing in other ventures that involve other people making decisions. And we have to accept that we don't know how it's all going to work out. We can make a best guess. We can do all of the homework ahead of time. We can prepare ourselves, as we said in number two, as much as we possibly can. There are ways to eliminate negative outcomes, but we can't eliminate them all. One of my favorite quotes that I have kept with me since I was a young girl and shared a few weeks ago on my newsletter is a quote from the Dalai Lama, and it states that any great success, whether in life or in love, involves great risk. And that that's, I have found that to be true in my life. I found that to be true with this job that I was seeking and eventually acquired, but in a, so many things, the blog, things that generally I am pinching myself over. I've had to take some risks. At least it seems risky to me. And that now those risks may not seem risky to someone else. That's the thing. You've got to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. 
Now, every time you step out of your comfort zone, it may not work out. It may not work out. And we'll get to that in another point. But the key is you have to be willing to accept the unknown from time to time if you're willing and wanting to grow, to change, to achieve something that already isn't existing in your life. So number three, accept the unknown. Number four, refuse to be squelched by self-imposed or society-imposed limitations. And what I mean by this is sometimes people just don't think certain things are possible. They don't know anyone who's done it. They've never seen it done. They've never seen someone like you do it, maybe. Maybe it's, you know, for whatever reason, your age, your sex, your height, your whatever it is, and they've never seen or known anyone who's done what you want to do. Maybe you've never seen or know anyone who's done what you wish to do. Do it anyway. Come prepared. Be willing to take risks. Stand up from failure because it's not truly failure and keep going. Oftentimes we put up obstacles that are false, but in doing so, what we're trying to do is keep ourselves safe. And that's normal. That's natural. That's human. But investigate why those obstacles are there. Where do they come from? Where's their root? Often they come from ignorance, from comfort zones of people in the past. More often than not, they come from ignorance. Break through that barrier. Number one, refuse to be deterred by self-imposed or societal imposed limitations. All right, I'm going to take a quick one minute break and I'll see you on the other side for the three remaining reasons. There is more to it was meant to be. Welcome back. We have three more points to get to with regards to the truths behind it was meant to be. Number five is don't be discouraged when initial attempts fail. And I should actually not use that word fail because you're not failing. It just wasn't successful the way you had hoped, but you no doubt will learn something. As I mentioned before, I learned that I needed to practice better questioning for my interview. I learned that I needed to hone my resume a little bit more work on a few of my leadership qualities, whatever it was, I knew there were ways that I could improve. I knew I could walk in there more confidently. Whether I got the job the second time or not, I knew I could do it better. I think this is always interesting. Whenever we hear or see of someone and it's defined in the news or the media as an overnight success, oftentimes if it's a genuine success, if it's a worthwhile applauding success, That person just simply hasn't been known to most people, but they've probably been hard at work at it for years, for years until they achieved the success of the recognition that has brought them to the headlines of the national media. And so that means that there has to be a lot of attempts, a lot of attempts along the way of fine tuning any experiment, any instrument, any talent that you are passionate about keeping as a regular job or keeping as something that feeds your family or feeds you. You have to keep working at it. Just because the first attempt fails doesn't mean your path to that success is a dead end. It's not. It's not. So number five, don't be discouraged when initial attempts fail. Number six, when you do reach some success, when something good works out and you get that yes, whatever it is, take the time as Steve Jobs speaks about in his 2005 Stanford uh, commencement speech, take the time to reflect back and connect the dots and see how everything played a hand in getting you to where you are. Most importantly in that moment, be grateful. 
Because often when we realize how fortunate we are, yes, we definitely helped get ourselves there, but there are no doubt were people that helped you get there. Be appreciative. Learn how success was able to come into fruition and apply that knowledge as you continue to move forward. Because I have no doubt that once you have reached your success, you're going to have more confidence to strive forward even more towards something else or something different that maybe you didn't initially think you could, but now you're like, okay, maybe I can. And you can, you're absolutely right. You can, but now you even have more invaluable knowledge as to how to make that success occur while bypassing those first initial failures you had in your first venture towards success. So number six is to take the time to reflect after you have reached success to see how all the dots connected. One thing I became aware of very, very quickly was that perhaps there was a reason why things didn't work out last year. I really do not know how I could have managed getting my book published, moving to a new town, starting a new job and launching the book successfully. That probably would have been beyond exhausting. And so in retrospect, in hindsight, I'm very thankful that my first attempt didn't work out. And I was given more time to fine tune and become more accomplished. So in that way, I am very grateful that I had time and had to check in with myself and see if I really did want to move to Bend. And as we know, we know the answer to that. But sometimes life is just simply trying to see, do you really want something? And if you do, you'll get up and try it again and again and again until something materializes. And a lot of times it's something more amazing than you could have imagined. So number six, take that time. And the last one, the last one is get ready to say yes. It's going to happen. This is the thing I want to just tell you right now. It will happen. If you continue to be prepared, if you continue to keep striving forward, taking on risk, it's going to happen eventually. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Don't be afraid to say yes. One of my mentors in this whole process wrote in one of the emails, he said, be prepared, be prepared. It's going to happen. And when he wrote that, you know, he obviously isn't clairvoyant. He didn't know for sure, but he, maybe he knew something I didn't. And he basically helped it sink in that maybe he's right. This really could happen. And when you realize that change is going to happen in your life and it's the change you've been seeking, sometimes it sets you back and like, whoa, do I really want this change? But this is the thing, guys, you sought after that particular goal for a reason, Something, if you kept going after it and going after it, there was something in you that was either missing or something that you were curious about or something that just you knew you needed to feed you. Trust that. Trust that. If it's been something you've been chasing for quite some time, trust it. Be willing to take on that risk of change and adapting to something new because along the way, you're going to grow, your life's going to improve beyond what it already probably is amazing, and you're going to be more content. So number seven, get ready to say yes and leap forward. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today's episode, all the show notes, if you're interested in those quotes that I shared or the books that I mentioned, can be found on the blog at thesimplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 37. So the next time someone tells you it was meant to be, And if it's something that you worked hard for and you were determined to help materialize in your own life, realize that you have to put yourself in the arena, pat yourself on the back for putting yourself in the arena. And if on the flip side, they say it's meant to be, and it's not something you're happy with, and it's not something that you're okay with, get back in the arena. Don't be limited by other people's limitations. Trust me. Trust me. It will be worth the battle. It will be worth the battle. Life may be testing you and it's seeing if you're courageous enough to stand back up. My advice, stand back up and strive forward. All right. We're going to take a brief intermission, maybe 10 seconds, and I'll see you on the other side for a book in this week's Petit Pleasure will help you stay mentally strong and reach your success. All right, welcome.
welcome back. So part of the reason I chose today's Petit Pleasure, the book, um, 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do, is because it dovetails quite nicely with today's episode on the podcast. We're talking about how to harness our power, take back what's in our control. And that's really what the quote, it was meant to be, is all about. We have to be aware of what we do control. So the book is by Amy Morin, and it came out this past December. It's called 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. Take back your power, embrace change, face your fears, and train your brain for happiness and success. Now, when I initially saw this cover in the bookstore, I actually found it in New Orleans at the Garden District Bookshop. I immediately was drawn to it. It's simple. It's straight to the point. I'm a lover of lists. Of course, I was really drawn to it. But this idea of mental strength is really at the core of so much of our lives. Our contentedness, our success, our self-respect and self-security, our sense of being in this world. And if we don't have the ability to master our minds, we give away so much power. So she organizes this book book beautifully. And a handful of the points we have already talked about earlier in today's episode with regards to taking calculated risks and how actually taking calculated risks can make you stronger. And I love this whole point of success will not find you. You must pursue it. She is straight to the point, but also gives very specific advice. She shares a handful of anecdotes from her own life, as well as clients, because she is a psychologist. And she talks about what doesn't work, what does work. So you really see black and white laid out the specific do's and don'ts of mentally strong people. And I'll just give you a glimpse of the list of what mentally strong people do. They don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves. I love this one. They don't shy away from change. I mean, if we're going to grow, if we're going to be successful, we have to be able to do that, right? They let go of those things they can't control, something we just talked about earlier today's episode. And they don't dwell on the past. That's always a tricky one, but she definitely reminds us why it's not a good idea to do that. Another one, they don't give up after their first failure. Sound familiar? Um, It's just, there's 13 of them. Those are just a few of them. But I think you will find this book very inspiring, very empowering. One of the things that I found interesting, she talks about IQ. Often we think of success. We think someone has to be uber intelligent, have an IQ through the roof, Einstein intelligent. But she, with the assistance of studies, demonstrates that grit is a better predictor of success than IQ. Quote, clearly not everyone with a high IQ reaches a high level of achievement. In fact, a person's IQ isn't a very good predictor of whether he or she will become successful. Grit, defined as perseverance and passion for long-term goals, has been shown to be a much more accurate predictor of achievement than IQ. End quote. So that's just a taste of the inspiration and the reminders of what mentally strong people do on their way to success. And it's all in her book by Amy Morin, 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. You can find a link to the book on today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash 37. I highly recommend it, an inspiring read and a worthwhile resource to have on hand. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Putsy Pleasure, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour. Bonjour.